Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dell. My name is Nathan, and Happy Halloween is in a couple days, so I figured I would say that. You know, uh, we had Craig Campbell on the show to talk about Die Laughing, which is a suitably spooky sort of game, and while he was here, we ended up talking about some other spooky things besides the game, so I thought I would bring that to you today. We spent some time coming up with some crazy monsters that you could use for your playthrough of Die Laughing, as well as talking about creepy pasta, the uncanny valley, and something called a Shiator. What is a Shiator? Well, you'll have to listen to find out. Enjoy! That's why X-Files is scarier than, uh, than, like, uh, NCIS. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. That, that's because of the Uncanny Valley, Nathan. You know, I keep hearing that term. I don't think I'm actually familiar with the Uncanny Valley, Alex. <sighs> Vagueness, Nathan. Vagueness. Vagueness. Oh, yes. Shall we yes. talk Uncanny Valley? Yes, sure. I love the cute. concept of the Uncanny Valley. It is actually really cool. The Uncanny Valley is the, uh, think of the slope that um, realism of, well, in our day and age in particular, for example, CGI characters. <laughs> if you go back to when CGI characters first started popping up, they all, they look, you know, like look at Lawnmower Man and some of those really early cy- cyberspace type movies. It was like, they didn't look like people. They looked like constructs. They looked like robots. They looked like solids and as time goes by and same thing for video games you remember what laura croft looked like yeah with with the pointy boobs and everything was all angular exactly but then you get to a point where um the realism of the 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 cgi character becomes very very becomes very very real and to the point where it starts to look like that's starting to look pretty darn human Mm -hmm. and then and it's a it's a the, the valley is like you know it's a it's a it's a curve it's a slope down where Things are starting. Things are. They, they go from being excellent and really uh, realistic, and then they start to get weird and creepy hmm. when they get a little too close. It's like uh, some of the robots you see seeing the androids that look like humans, but their faces are kind of wrong. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. And they're like really creepy, but they're kind of realistic, but they're really off. Uh, think yeah. Tom Hanks' character in Polar Express. <laughs> Okay. Where yep. it's like it looks like Tom Hanks, but it kind of looks like a creepy CG Tom Hanks because they're starting to get out of like it's it's not quite right. And you know, it's one of those things that you see mm-hmm. with with video games and CG. It gets close, but you still know it's CG, and you're cool with it being CG. And if it's a monster like Gollum or something, you're you're accepting of like the imperfections, and it's like, oh well, it's a it's a monster. It doesn't have to look human, right? Right. Um, right. But if you try to get really really human. Like, look at your own skin, look at your, your, your arm and look at all the different colors and all the modeling and mm-hmm. all the little blemishes and imperfections and things that are happening there. Well, getting yeah. that, getting that to happen um, yeah. in CG is incredibly difficult because there's so much going on so that like, right. if you don't get that level of detail, perfect, it starts to look a little weird. Yeah. And you see the same thing with like facial expressions. You know what a, what a video game person's mouth looks like when they're talking it doesn't mm-hmm. look like a real person's mouth talking no it no. doesn't have the little nuance and little micro expressions and movements that that a yeah. person's mouth actually has yeah. yeah yeah so for a while it gets really so until they get it absolutely perfect when you're really close it's a little weird i mean yeah video came characters mouths for a little while were basically an outgrowth of pac-man <laughs> they just they saw that game and they were like, oh, OK, that's how people talk. Pac-Man it, seemed pretty realistic at the time. The jaw just moves up and down. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, rah, 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 rah. Yeah. <laughs> this is your quest. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. I was uh, watching something where they were talking to artists and, and um, about CG. And they said the thing that people don't usually think about when it comes to rendering like skin and flesh is that there's a lot of green in, in there, like underneath because of all the veins and everything so uh a lot of people get that wrong when there's a lot of yeah model. there's a lot of color that's happening in there yeah there's a um, lot and you see that. it in just other little stuff too like like how hair was done 
mm-hmm. prior to about the time Monsters Inc. came out. Like read up, you know, read up on and, and watch documentaries and things about the uh, the Pixar movies. Like mm-hmm. every time they do a movie, they have to kind of fix. They have to kind of figure out how to do something that isn't being done quite well enough. Right. And like when they did Monsters Inc., it was all about Sully's hair and getting right. that physics engine that causes the hair to wave and move and all the individual hairs kind of they move together, but they all are all individual. Right. You know? And when they did Finding Nemo, it was all about showing water. Mm hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Which, you know, before that, there hadn't been a lot of great, you know, underwater or rendering of water in CG where like they 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 constantly are pushing the boundary. And there's there's a part of me that thinks like when they're breaking stories and hashing out what the next movie is going to be, that's going to take them, you know, three and a half years to make Mm -hmm. um, that they find themselves that they specifically challenge themselves, you know, like, okay, if we're going to do this movie, are we ready to do it now? Because we're going to have to figure out how to do water. Right. For example, like they right. couldn't have done Finding Nemo well back in the first Toy Story days. Yeah. They wouldn't have been able to render water for crap back then. Right. <laughs> and it, do, it does make me think like probably the hardest thing for them to do would be to actually try to make realistic looking people. Because if you look at any of like the Pixar movies uh, specifically, they have really stylistic versions of humans in yeah. almost every single one of those. So they don't they don't end up with that uncanny valley situation. Yeah, they're all cartoons. They, yeah, they're all, they're all cartoon exactly. people. They're not real looking people. They're all cartoony. And if you keep them all cartoony, it's all perfect because you're, 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 you're before the uncanny Valley. If you try to get too realistic, then you run the risk of it being a little weird. Absolutely. Because you notice the imperfections and it just kind of pulls you out of it. I just thought of a great example that Nathan already knows. And that is Slenderman. Oh, yep. (laughs) <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, uh, and that's why they didn't put a face on Slender Man. Actually, you know what I'm realizing? If they put a face on Slender Man, uh, he would not be nearly as scary. Depends yeah, on the that depends on that depends on the face. I was like, gonna I was ex- I was gonna say exactly that. It depends <laughs> on the face. Like if they put Morgan Freeman's face and voice on there, <laughs> who wouldn't want that narrating? Your oh life, yeah, 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 exactly. Well, I'll how about you. um? <laughs> so you've wandered into the woods. That's uh, I, I may I may happen to be looking at a lot of creepy pasta lately. So <laughs> what if what if they put the face from Ben Drowned on there, Nathan? Uh, why why are you looking at creepy pasta, Alex? I, I, I have reasons. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if you take Slender Man and you put like like Steve Buscemi's face on there, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> I uh, still still not as scary as Steve Buscemi on a Steve Buscemi body though. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say I don't know. He's pretty slender the way it is. They based Slender Man off of Steve Buscemi. Yeah. <laughs> but we want his face to be the opposite of Steve Buscemi. Oh yeah, exactly. Not Steve Buscemi's body, but the opposite face. Yeah. So no face, because Steve Buscemi is all face. Uh, all face, all face, all the time. I guess you could have scary faces on Slender Man, but I think it's just the idea that. Uh, it could be anything is is more terrifying because, of course, the most terrifying thing is the unknown. Uh, the most terrifying thing is what Stephen King refers to as skull cinema. You don't have to show the monster. Let people imagine what it looks like. Mm. The cin- cinema yeah. of the skull. What's going on inside your brain? Like, I'm not a big horror movie buff, but uh, but you are like in the old movies, like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and those things. The reason why people thought those were really scary is because a lot of it you don't see. What's Texas happening. Chainsaw Massacre is notorious for not showing you much of anything. And actually, that means that it's really easy. Alex, we could practically make a horror movie. What you do, <laughs> it's just audio. We'll just do an audio show and it will just be a black screen and no budget for like uh, special effects. <laughs> Here you go, Nathan. I'll, I'll show you something else if you want to fig- find a picture. Oh, so uh, another thing, if you want to do with creepy stuff, is go with stuff that your brain can't really analyze properly. Oh, okay. So like this here, <laughs> uh, if you notice in Skype, that well, doesn't look too bad, right? No, it doesn't. It doesn't look too bad. It, it, it will in a second when you turn the face up, right? <laughs> your your brain doesn't process upside down human faces that way so when gotcha. you rotate it correctly it's really fucking creepy thank yeah, you for joining exactly. us on the audio podcast <laughs> we've got a visual portion of I have show. to make, make sure you keep those around because then I have to put them in the posting 
yeah. for the episode so that people get an idea of what you're talking about. <laughs> I uh, have some, uh, it, some... There's a really good animated version of that that oh. Vsauce did, which is why I know that. So. We'll just tell people to go watch Vsauce. There's something on Vsauce, folks. Just go watch that. Finish listening to the episode first, but then go watch that and see more uh, faces that are going to freak you out. Like Nathan's. Don't. I can't do an upside down face. Everybody, he's he, he's trying to turn his whole face upside down. I try. Yeah. It's, it's I, not working. <laughs> no, I'm not an owl. An owl would be a really good monster. <laughs> <An owl. laughs> you know, what? you would never hear it coming. You would just die. Be like owl boy. But but he's become an <laughs> owl man, and he's he grows up and becomes the the villain of the piece. What happens when you're no longer the hero? It's, Become an owl man. <laughs> yeah, there's there's probably somebody out there that's made some sort of owl horror movie. Just go looking around. The ratings and the reviews all said it was a hoot. Ooh. Sure, you you feel good about that one, Alex? I do. Yeah, I think it was for the birds. Oh, hey, you know, The Birds was a movie. <laughs> oh, man, you are the master of just... <laughs> See, the non sequitur. That was a horror movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Hitchcock the, did a few. Yeah, the, the and The Birds uh, did not have to deal with the Uncanny Valley at all. <laughs> no, those bird. birds uh, didn't look terribly real in some of the <laughs> shots. No, they certainly. Oh, it was you know it was the yeah it was the special effects of the time. Yeah, now for, see for, for audiences then that was pretty darn good and pretty pretty convincing and a yeah. lot of fun. I've heard that they're going to try to make a remake of the birds, but they're going to put Steve Buscemi's face on all of the birds. <laughs> they're going to say put the bees in it, so you'd have the birds and the bees. No, 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 no. It's much scarier if you put Steve Buscemi's face on all the birds. The bees already had their movie. It was called Bee Movie. And... Searching for Steve Buscemi bird face swap. <laughs> and let's see if we come up with anything. Ask uh, ask our hybrid animals for it, and you can probably get it. Sure. <laughs> That's terrific. Uh, th- thanks for joining That's how we came across the Shiatar. <laughs> half, half Horace, half Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Why? That's, it was a thing that a friend and I had joked about, and I requested, and somebody so, pulled through. Hold it a second. Hold it a second. So it's half Minotaur and half Shia LaBeouf? Centaur. Centaur. It's half Centaur. horse. And then it's half, half Shia LaBeouf. Yes. Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Yes. Actual centaur Shia LaBeouf. We need to stab him in his kidney. Did he go to Candy Mountain? Is it that? That's Charlie the Unicorn. Charlie the Unicorn, right. So he's half Charlie the Unicorn, half Shia LaBeouf, and he will take your kidney and also eat it. No. It's terrifying. We're coming up with all kinds of great new monsters that we can put into Die Laughing, just for the record. <laughs> well, and that's the great thing. You will be able to, because you'll, you'll be able to go ahead and uh, just print out as many blank uh, monster pages as you want to, and you can make yep. up all sorts of crazy crap. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. In, in, the, uh, in the back end of this episode, we're just coming up with new terrifying monsters you can come up, that you can use for the game. It's terrific. Uh, a, a centaur Shia LaBeouf, uh, Steve Buscemi <laughs> birds. Um, you know, there's a lot of really great options for things that you can make. Don't give anyone like a pumpkin head. Pumpkin head is already a monster in a movie. Damn it. That's right. <laughs> that's why I thought. Uh, oh, yeah, you're you're talking to the horror movie guy, man. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was realizing don't give him a pumpkin head because licensing. Oh, that's why, sure. You have to give him a different gourd for a head. Yeah. A different gourd for a head? Yeah, you um, like squash head. Is that like, the, that? that isn't even B-movies. Those are C-movies. Those are rip-offs of B-movies where you have squash head. And you wouldn't have, uh, you wouldn't have what? Hellraiser. You would have Heckraiser. You'd have Heckenraiser. Heckenraiser. Yeah. Lawnmower Man. No, it's just Weed Whacker Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all of like the second tier. We're not going to have like Freddy and Jason. We're going to have Frederick. And oh, Jason isn't short for anything, is it? Damn. Jasonius. Jasonius. Sure. Why just, not? Just Solomon. You. And Michael Myers is already Michael Myers. But you can just have Mike Myers then. It can just be that, you know. Oh, yeah. That Canadian com- comedian. Yeah, exactly. Around, like, killing, killing Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, you know. Is, that, is this like the movie Bruce Campbell did about I'm Bruce Campbell? 
Oh, probably. Oh yeah, he did. He did one that was where he was. Yeah, it was like self-referential. He was playing himself essentially. He got like hired to come to some some event or convention in some little town or something, and then horror horror wackiness ensues. Yeah, he played himself, but people thought he was a character from uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Well, I mean, Bruce Campbell kind of sells anything that he's in <laughs> by virtue of being Bruce Campbell. Exactly. Yeah, he played what Ash Ketchum. No, sorry, he played. <laughs> You gotta catch all the evil dead. It's gonna be the best. Like no one ever was. His, like, na- no his, ever- his name is actually Ashley. Ashley. In those movies. He is called Ashley by his girlfriend in the first movie. I don't remember Just what like, his last name is, though. Is it, is it Ashley Williams? It might be Williams. I, I thought because it was really weird that there was a character in Mass Effect that also was named Ashley Williams. And I was thinking, is that supposed to be a reference that we're... <laughs> That no one's going to acknowledge in this game. Someone out there will remind me if I'm wrong. Because I'm not an Evil Dead aficionado. I'm not an aficionado. Of yeah, it's Ash things. Williams. Oh. Nathan, if you really wanted to, if he hadn't just looked it up, you could probably ask my sister. I could ask your sister? Which yeah. one? The cool one. Again, which one? Oh, right. The one with way too many tattoos. The one with the way too many tattoos. Oh, okay. The, the, not not the moderate amount of tattoos, the way too many tattoos. <laughs> more tattoos than you? Uh, yeah, technically both of them have more than I do. That's why you're not the cool one in the family. That, that's the single reason why, right there, good job. <laughs> <laughs> that is the great thing about family reunions. We just get to figure out who's actually cool and who is... Nobody. No one. No. Whichever one of them comes with a gourd on their head, it's probably going to be Justin. <laughs> it's probably going to be Justin. I don't know. I think that Clayton is. Anyways. I'll take your word for it. I don't know any of these people. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, well, uh, let me put you That's this way. That's its own horror movie. <laughs> well, let, let me put you this way. Uh, Clayton is the one that uh, uh, brought a, a potato cannon to a family reunion one time. I'm just saying. Nice segue here. Do you have a uh, character archetype for a redneck? Um, not specifically as an archetype, but uh, crazy as hillbillies are a monster. Perfect. Ooh. They're the same thing. And they were framed. It's what a Dale and Tucker versus evil situation. <laughs> you can play it that way, or you can play it wrong turn, or oh, I was thinking wrong turn, or, or Texas Chainsaw, or yeah, yeah. The hills have eyes. Are they from West Virginia? Or are you just thinking of Fallout seventy six? Does that take place in West Virginia? Yes, it does. That's why. Take Me Home Country Roads was the song. Hey, you know what? That's coming out next month, Nathan. You getting it? Uh, um, <laughs> that's a... Uh, 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 <laughs> that, that, well, no, since, since... Okay, I guess since we're on that, um, that's mostly just me saying I'm a huge Bethesda fan and I really love Fallout, but I don't know if I like the format of 76. <laughs> And I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it all that much, even though I want to play it at some point. I don't know if I'm going to rush right out and get it. It's basically me saying that because I know I'm going to get into a session where it's just everybody else in the session just wants to get a nuke and and nuke whatever I built. And I'm not going to enjoy that. (laughs) Perfect. You can play it for the website. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, it will be an attempting to play at some point. I did actually consider at some point just doing a fast video because in Fallout 4, someone made a mod that acts like Fallout 76. And I think they did it a bit sarcastically and bitterly, where all of a sudden, just random nukes go off in the world. Griefers just start to hunt you down at random intervals in the game. And I feel like I've already gotten that experience. Are you going to play 76? I don't know. I'll figure it out when I get there. Out of curiosity, Craig, are you intrigued by Fallout 76? I'm not much of a video game person, actually. All right. Sorry. Sorry! They actually have a lot of monsters that are going to be based on West Virginian folklore, and I kept telling people that it basically means it's Adventure Zone uh, Amnesty, but in video game form. So, looking forward to that. The McElroys are going to be thrilled. We've come up with so many wonderful monsters to play for <laughs> Die Laughing, and uh, so many uh, good thoughts on how you can uh, hopefully not die in Die Laughing. And, yeah, uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> there can only be one. <laughs> and you're probably yeah. playing six or eight, so the odds are not in your favor. This the is game, the, ca- the game mechanics work against you. Basically, Happy Hunger Games. Slender Man's one of the competitors. Enjoy.
So uh, just just to recap, so uh, the uh, the Kickstarter comes out at the end of October, runs for three months. So October thirtieth, three, three weeks runs for three weeks. Three weeks. I'm not running the Kickstarter for three months. No, oh, three months. No, sorry, three three that, weeks. That would be a little intense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so for three weeks, uh, it starts on October thirtieth, and uh, one price, one thing. Ten gets, bucks, you get a game. Ten bucks, you get the game. And uh, you can try and escape Pennywise and see if you do any better than the kids in the movie. So, Craig, if uh, anyone out there was looking to get a hold of you or uh, Nerd Burger Games, uh, where where could they go on the Internet? Uh, Yeah, you can go to nerdburgergames.com where I talk about all the game stuff that's going on, stuff that I'm working on. Um, You can go to drivethroughrpg.com to buy Murders and Acquisitions or Capers. Um, along with all the fun uh, support material and extra stuff, all the goodies that go with those games. Um, and Die Laughing will be available there soon, but uh, got to kickstart first. Got to kickstart them all. Kickstart, Mon. So <laughs> how, if uh, anyone out there was interested in getting uh, some more Delve in their life, where could they go? You can find more Delve over at delvecast.com. And uh, what can they find on Delvecast? Oh boy, you can find uh, Delve, of course. You can find some oh. other articles uh, straight about occasionally. You can find Nathan's wonderful attempting to play series, where Nathan, uh, I don't know, you tell him what you do. Yeah, and attempting to play is a is a video game play uh, like let's play series. Uh, sometimes I have some things that I want to talk about specifically about games, but a lot of times. It's it's more like creating a a story that is kind of personal for myself. And so it's it's just a fun little video series about video games. And uh, you can also find uh, Orbital. I just actually put an episode up very recently. I, I got to listen to it after Gap uh, made that. So it's a it's it's a good time for everybody. Okay. You can find all that over on Delvecast. Nate, when you are there, make sure to click on our Patreon banner and become a patron for the show. You can get extended episodes and some exclusive content. I've been putting up a little bit more uh, for people, uh, some exclusive episodes and some stuff from our archives uh, that you can find over there. And a big thank you to our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Don Perry. Thank you for uh, supporting the show. Uh, you can also find us on the iTunes and the Google Play and all of those wonderful places. Uh, rate and review and subscribe unless you want Slender Man to visit you because uh, that will happen I- oh, if you boy. don't. <laughs> oh no! Creepy pasta. What will happen? It will be like uh, saying like the the Bloody Mary into the mirror, but it will be uh, something more for the technological age. Oh okay. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. <laughs> no, you can't say it a third time. I'm sorry, I can't do it another time. And of course, you can find us uh, on the the Twitter. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and the show is at Dell Podcast. Uh, Craig, you are also on uh, Twitter, if I am correct. Yes, I am at Nerd Burger Craig. Perfect. Uh, and so you can uh, find out more about Die Laughing by following Craig there. Although I think that we have pretty much explained everything possible about the game on on this show pretty Maybe. close yeah <laughs> pretty close yeah i don't know short of us actually playing the game on the show yeah probably. uh but you know somebody is going to say you didn't even talk about werewolves and i'll have to say well it just didn't come up in polite conversation <laughs> and is there a werewolf there is no werewolf monster no yet yet there you go yet and if we had a versus mode, you already have the vampire. So then vampires versus werewolves. Sure. And, and now you can play an overused horror movie trope. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's, you that's can play all Underworld. The... Yay. No, you can play. No, no. It would end up being Twilight. You know it's going to end up being Twilight. Well, it was a sexy vampire, so I guess. Or Vampire the Masquerade. Vampires and, and werewolves do not get along in that either. But it would totally be it would totally be Twilight if it's supposed to be like funny. <laughs> can't get anything funnier than Twilight. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show, Craig, and uh, scaring and terrifying me and uh, <laughs> uh, making me think about my own mortality. That was a really great thing you did there. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm glad I could give you something to think about tonight as you try to fall asleep. It'll be that upside down face right side up.
Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, in in the spookiest time of year, I'm so glad that we <laughs> that we just added to that tension. And uh, so to everybody out there, I hope you are all having a, a very spooky time. Spoops. I still don't know why people say that, but I'm going with it. And uh, we will talk to you on the next one. Um, if we survive. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Well. Wow. That that ended abruptly. What do we call the movie that we were all just in? <laughs> Scream. We'll call that movie It Was Norman All Along. <laughs> as long as we're spoiling movies. <laughs> it was me, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody call the Belmonts. We need, we need to deal with this. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> burr, burr. Now, uh, it does bring up a few interesting uh, mechanical questions for you. Um, Alex, are you seeing the same thing I'm seeing? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Never doesn't mind. Even know what you're seeing. It just I'm seeing a completely different screen than you are, so I have no idea what you're seeing. <laughs>